Hallelujah. I have a word for you. Uh, today, I wanted to really get into a topic that is a little bit touchy. Pastor David, don't get there. But I have to. You need a pastor who is not afraid. How many of you want to follow a pastor who want to be correct? Want to be see? We, this is the world we live in. I want, I'm touching a topic that most people feel uncomfortable. But I'm. I, it's okay. I I'd rather please God than men. We are not men pleasers. Hallelujah. We want to please God. We want to please God. You see, this church is growing at a rate I it, it shocks me. And many of you, you're coming here, you're looking at what is going on. I had somebody who came yesterday and they knew where we were before and they, they just decided to come here. What? What is this? Well, how did you get here? But I'm telling you, God is with us. God is, and we want him to stay with us all the way. All the way, hallelujah. And so we have to keep doing the right things. We have to keep believing the right things. We have to keep, uh, we, we don't need to, to make what we have get destroyed just because of, you see, there are all kinds of ideas out there of how to do something. How many of you know that? And, and sometimes that becomes a problem. Now, I, do, I don't know how I'm doing it. I really, if you ask me for a formula, you're asking a wrong man. I don't have a formula on how this church is running. I don't. But I just know that God has the plan. Uh, we just have to follow the plan. And right now, we can get to a place where we can, uh, we can become too technical to the point where God is not in it. But we want to keep God in the picture. He is the one who started all these things. We follow him. We follow him. We follow the spirit. And the spirit leads us. We follow. We really need to. Because right now, we can come to a place where we think we've arrived, but we haven't. If you're going to, what we are now, I saw it way back. I saw this way back. And I was talking about it, and it scared a lot of people away from me. I'm honestly telling you. It did. And some people just told me, David, you're talking too much about moving to a bigger building. You can't even afford it. I, I, till today, I can't afford it. But God can. <laughs> I, I'm telling you. I sat in meetings with other leaders where they told me, David, you need to stop this. You are going to a place where you are heading in for a wreck. Now, they are right. I'm not saying they are wrong. They are right based on the facts. They are absolutely right. But the moment I want, even I actually believed what they said. But the moment I want to put it away, I can't sleep. Then I got up, I begin to pray and say, then I hear, go for it. But what if? There is always the what if it doesn't work. What if it becomes difficult? What if it doesn't add up? What are you going to do? See, let me tell you one thing. You need to believe things before they happen. You need to surround yourself with people that believe you, the vision God has given to you before it happens, not after it happens. Then if we have to get into it only after it happens, then why do we need to have faith? So faith is basically believing something before it happens. And Moses got himself in that place where he was trying to get the children of Israel to believe what the vision he has before it happens. And some of them said, oh, <laughs> there are giants in that land. Uh, we, we, we can't possibly do that. It, it, this is too, look at those guys. Some of them are nine feet tall. I mean, like Goliath. How can we possibly fight those guys? We are like grasshoppers in their sight. And I'm telling you, there are many things in your life that you wanted to do but the people that are around you can't see it. 
they, can, they may not see it, but God is telling you, I didn't ask you to do it based on what they think, but what I think. What I'm telling you is that I can help you, but you say, yeah. But then we go around and we ask so many people about what God has told us. But I'm telling you, you have to be careful who you talk to because some of them are going to tell you, I don't think you're going to do that. Uh, you're not going to do that. But, but you need to listen to God. If God has spoken to you, why do you have to worry about what other people think? I'm telling you, there are many things in your life that you need to, so you need to go to a person who can say, brother, why not we pray? Hold up, 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 up. Hey, let's pray now in the name of Jesus. We're going to believe now. Now, somebody like that, that saying, let's pray about it, it's more likely God is going to tell them the same thing that you have in your heart. Because they just don't want to tell you what they feel. They are going to tell you what God wants. And then you can carry on. But don't wait until everybody actually jumps on that boat with you. Nobody's going to be with you when the vision is too tough. When there are giants involved. <laughs> when there's finances involved. I don't think they're going to be with you. But God said, I will be with you. I know the plans I have for you is to give you a hope and a future, to prosper you and not to harm you. Amen. And I talked about Mary, the mother of Jesus. I always, I, you see, we don't worship Mary, but we learn from her. She, a virtuous woman, a, a woman of faith. She was a holy woman. But this is what happened to her. She was pregnant without a man. That's something that never happened to anybody, and it will never happen again. It only happened once. So nobody was going to believe her message. Nobody's going to believe her news that she was pregnant without a man. In fact, they would have stoned her to death. Which 30 years later, the same son of Mary, Jesus, protected a woman who was going to be stoned because she was caught in adultery. But you can back it up 30 years before that. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was in the same place where she would have been stoned if she reveals the fact that she was pregnant without a man. So what did Mary do? She has no, you see, she was very careful who you talk to about a situation like that. Some of them in today's world would have said, maybe you can go to the abortion clinic. No, no. Because this is a scandal. Who has ever heard anything like this? Mary decided to visit another woman. Can somebody say amen? She went and visited Elizabeth. Wow. She went to the right person, the right advice, the right person who shares the same vision. A person who can tell you, wow, Mary, I don't think what you're talking about is out of this world. This is from God. And they encourage one another. And in fact, John the Baptist was already in Elizabeth's womb. And the two of them talked about how God was very good. I'm telling you, you need to surround yourself with people that understand the vision that God has given to you. People that understand that vision. And, and that's what I found out. Today I can look back and I said, wow, I saw this thing there. I was scared then, but now I'm living it. Praise God. But now I have to begin to see further than where we are at. And it is still scary. There's always going to be difficulties there. There's always going to be giants that you might have to face. But you have to say, hey, if God was with me then, I'm sure he will be with me now. Hallelujah. He can take me to the next level and I'm going to trust him. Because the fear of men, the fear of what people may say. If you be the only person left believing God, you need to keep on believing God. But thank God you are not the only person. You have friends, hallelujah. You have believers in this church. People that are still hanging on and they're still trusting God. Amen? So we are going to see this church grow. We are going to see this church advance. I'm just trying to pour out my heart to you. If we stop, if we begin to stop doing the things that we used to do at first, 
In the book of Revelation, it speaks of the, that you have forsaken your love, your first love. Do the things you used to do at first. And if you are not doing it, there is a word for it. It's called backsliding. <laughs> that means you have backslidden from what God has called you to do. I wanted us to go to Haggai. Haggai chapter 2. I want to highlight the scripture there. If you can put that in Haggai chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. And I wanted to read that because it, it kind of brings me to the topic I wanted to touch. You, you even that guys don't know what it is. But it's a very, very touchy subject. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It says, uh, we can start from there. It says, in the seventh month, on the 21st of the month, the, Lord, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Judah, and to, uh, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people of Israel. Let's go. The next one. Who is left among you who saw this temple in the former glory? And how do you see it now in comparison with it? Is this not in your eyes as nothing? Yet, now be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord, and be strong, Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and be strong, all you people of the land, says the Lord, and work, for I am with you, say the Lord of hosts. Work, and somebody say work. We are going to work and make sure that this place becomes a place that in the city of Regina, in the province of Saskatchewan, and it is, if it is going to be the nations of the world, it's a place that people come and they connect with God. Hallelujah. We connect with God. That is really very important. And today, there is a topic. Some of you, if you come to church on Sunday, you hear Philip just touch here about the topic that I'm going to be talking about. And he really nailed it down. It's a subject of tithing. How many of you heard that word, tithing, when you go to church? Yeah. Now some of you don't throw tomatoes at me. But I'm telling you, it's a very, very fundamental uh, topic that we need to look at. It's a foundational for our Christian faith to understand this subject of tithing. We barely hear about it when we hear a message on the offerings that we receive for the church amen but i'm telling you this church grew to where it is is because of people like you who are giving into it right who are giving into it and i'm telling you this include myself i'm not gonna brag about myself but i know what god has put me here and how i work to make sure that the the, the ministry of the church survives amen so that the ministry go forward now i'm not telling you this because the pastor wants funds my tell you i'm telling you my dad is very rich my dad he owns the whole world and all the silver in it uh, and i'm telling you my dad he provides for me i've never gone without he always provides never have we lacked any good thing hallelujah so I'm not here to tell you so that you can give it to me so I can buy myself a jet and fly from here to Saskatoon and preach. That's not me. You know, if you don't know me, you better get to know me. I, that's not me. I'm here to tell you about the word of the Lord. And my, the goal of this is so that you, you be blessed. This is for you to be obedient. The key is obedience. How many of you want to be like Abraham? Well, find out what Abraham, who was he? He was obedient. He was a man of faith. He followed God at his word. Now, some of us, you see, we do all kinds of things as in this church to make sure everything runs. Some of it, we do it outside of the ordinary. We have renovations going on. Guess what? We do it ourselves, praise God. We have a lot of people that are handy and we make it work. But I think we are getting to a place where very soon we need to begin to 
make sure that we do it as God has commanded it. Amen? We give into the work of the Lord. Now, today the topic is the importance of tithing. And some people don't know what that word is. How many of you really don't know what tithing is? You know, you don't have to raise your hand, but most people don't. They really don't understand what it is. Now, today, tithing is basically honoring God with the first fruits of your income. You honor God with the first fruit of your income. Now, a lot of churches, a lot of people think, oh, pastor, you don't have to talk about it. But if you ask them why, they don't even have an answer. You don't have to talk about tithing. Honoring God with the first fruit of your income. Now, in the Old Testament, most people are not, they are not working like the kinds of jobs we do. They are farmers. So they, if they have cattle, the tenth of that, if they have ten cattle, that means one of it, they're going to give it to the work of God. Whether they sell it or they take the whole thing as it is, they give it to God. I'm telling you, this is one thing you need to try and see what God, how God is going to bless you. You just try it. I've taught this mainly to a lot of our young people, and I found out how they are actually doing it. <laughs> they, now, they don't have anything, but they are doing it. They are actually doing it. You know what? I am seeking after your blessing. I wanted you to be blessed. If you're blessed, the church is blessed. Can somebody say amen? amen. I mean, if you're blessed, the church is blessed. And God wants to prosper us. And I wanted us to look at this. Now here, the tithe is the tent. Let's look at that, the notes there. It says, the tithe is the tent of your income, and it should be given to God faithfully. Somebody say faithfully. faithfully. Tithing honors the scriptural principles of generosity, providing for religious leaders, giving to those in need, and laying up treasures in heaven. Now, the work of the church, the, the salary of the pastor, all those things, it helps advance the work of God. Amen? It has to be provided for. And so, as, as it is for me, most of you know, I, I, I'm do, I've done it for nothing. I'm not here for a salary. I can work for myself. But this, this church is growing to a place where many of you, many people are advising me, Pastor David, you need to really... You're working yourself too much. You're stretched all over the place. I like to visit with people. I like to pray with people. I need to cancel people. We need to get to a place where I'm not too busy. Even for my own family, how many of you believe that? I, I, it's not very good. I don't think it should make you proud to see your pastor run too much like that. And, and I've been hearing it. And so I'm not here to solicit for something. I'm just telling you it's a fact. I don't have to prove myself that I can work so hard. I just love to work, but sometimes I take it to the, to the limit. And we need to, the church is growing, and we have to make sure it grows and we, it is sustained. Amen? Hallelujah. So through Scripture, we are encouraged to give the first fruit of our resources to God. God is, God as an expression of honor and gratitude. Honor the Lord with the substance. Proverbs chapter 3 to 10. Why not we look at that? Faith, if you can put that, because I wanted the scriptures, let the scriptures speak. Let God's word speak to you. And, and I wanted God's word to, to kind of bring, and this is not to bring condemnation. Amen? I don't want you to be condemned on this. This is not the purpose of this. He said, honor the Lord with your, come on guys, honor the Lord with your, with the first fruits of your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. Next verse. My son. No, that's not the right verse there. You are trying to trick me. <laughs> I know, I know. I know those verses quite well. 
So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Honor the Lord with the first fruit of your income or whatever you're doing that God has given you. Now, understanding the biblical basis for tithing. Tithing is mentioned throughout the Old Testament, particularly when commissioned, when God commissioned the Israel, the, the Israeli tribe of Levi to serve by caring for the tabernacle and providing spiritual leadership for the nation of Israel. Since the tribe of Levi was given these two unique responsibilities, God did not assign to them a portion of the land as he had assigned the portions of the land to the other tribes of Israel. But he instructed the rest of the Israelites to bring tithes of their increase to provide for the priests and the Levites. In the New Testament, Jesus informed the practice of tithing. He confirmed it. In fact, many people would say, well, that was the Old Testament principle. In the New Testament, we don't tithe. Have you heard that? That's not true. Uh, you see, but I have a question. If you tithe, you have nothing to lose. You really have nothing to lose. You're giving it to God. And you're giving to the Lord. And we read a lot of scripture in the Bible. They say, give and it shall be given unto you. You see, a lot of people can give to all kinds of causes, but they can't give to the work of the Lord, in the house of the Lord. This is where your tithes should go. Amen? So Jesus affirmed it in Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. Let's look at that. Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. I wanted you to see what Jesus said. If tithing is an Old Testament principle, how did Jesus mention it? He mentioned it. He said, woe to you, far Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, you, for you pay tithe of mint and, and anise and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. So he was talking to the Pharisees that you guys do all these good things. You have neglected mercy and justice. And then he said, this you ought to have done without living Without the other undone. He was talking about tithing. He said, you need to do all the tithing. Plus also, you need to know, make sure that you have, you, you render justice and mercy and faith. He didn't say, don't get rid of tithing. He's saying, you need to do the tithing, but you also need to, how many of you know, just because you give tithe, God is, it doesn't make you in the right place with God if you go around and beat people up. You need to love them. Hallelujah. <laughs> so Jesus was saying, uh, even if you give you all your tithe, but, uh, and you're angry with people, you know, you are not loving people, you know. You need to do all those things, but don't neglect the tithe. You need to do them all. Amen? We need to do, do those things all. And God is telling us there. Hallelujah. How many of you, are you still there? Yeah. Am I, is that, oh, don't throw tomatoes at me now. Uh, this, I'm just trying to do my what God is, and I'm not ashamed of it. Hallelujah. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 15. The word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter, no, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 15. 2 Corinthians. Faith. Coming out of there. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap. Are you sowing? I'm telling you, it is time for you to expect that you're going to reap. Talk to the farmer. They sow the seed, and then they wait, and they expect that God is going to bring the harvest. Amen? So you're sowing. He said, but this I say, he who sows sparingly also will reap sparingly. If you're not sowing, don't expect to reap where you haven't sown. You have to sow a seed. And, and then he says, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? God loves a cheerful giver. The next thing we need to do is we need to put it into practice. It says put it into practice. God is not just telling us these things. 
and then for us to hear it Sunday after Sunday, he wanted you to put it into practice. So what you need to do, you need to say, man, you see, I, I, I come from the Sudan. And I'm I, sorry, guys, I always talk about Sudan, but I don't want to talk about somebody else. I want to talk about where I come from. Praise God. Uh, where I come from. I talk about myself because then nobody can throw stones at me. Praise God. But the Sudan, you know, I, until I went to India, I couldn't get, I didn't understand what this is. Uh, and then I got into a church where they taught me they taught me the word of the Lord. Amen. Being a believer, being born again, a foundation was laid, a right foundation from which we can build. Trusting God with your resources. So they taught me that. But where I was in the Sudan, I, I have never heard anything like that. I even don't know how the church was functioning where my dad was a pastor. But guess what? That church was functioning almost 100% by resources that are coming from the United States and Europe on donations. It wasn't from the local people giving into it. Now, I have a different thought about it. The blessings of the Lord was not there. There was all kinds of problems. I'm talking about the supernatural blessings of God. I mean, it's the people from the Western donors can give. Now, we are in a situation where there was war. So a lot of Western countries want to help the situation in Sudan. I understand that. But yet they are supposed to practice the word of the Lord. It's so that they can look up to the hills and say, I lifted my eyes up to the United States. And where does my help come from? No, 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 no. I lifted my eyes up to the hills from where my help come from. My help come from the Lord. He is the maker of heaven and earth. He is my sustainer. He will provide. And when you go to God and you take from that 10 bucks that you made at McDonald's. And you take that one dollar. Hey. India. She's working now. Give it to mom. Hey? You give that one dollar to God. Just that one dollar, you give it to God. What do you have to lose? Nine is yours. I, I'm just trying to make it simple. As simple as, is, is God really that bad that you want to take your money? No. One dollar out of ten the nine is yours. I think he's a good God. He's not taking it all. He's just saying. And then he said so that he can bless the nine that you have. The nine is blessed. Hallelujah. You're blessed. And then in, we always hear in Malachi. He said, God said, test me in this. Try me in this. Put it into practice and see what will come of it. See, I have connections. Some friends that I have. They love our church. Some of them, you don't. sometimes they see what I'm doing here, and they come and stop by, and they say, oh, David, I really want to help you in this. Now, they have been generous, but this is not their church. It has to come from here, and, and it has been happening here. Actually, a lot of people here are pulling together. That's why we have all our lights in place. We have everything that we have is working. But I'm telling you, we need to pull more together so that this church can be sustained. So that Pastor David, and we want to have our office, we want to have a, a secretary that is sitting there Monday to Friday or Monday to Thursday. Hallelujah. Amen. From 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock, just like all the other churches. Are. Praise God. Can somebody say Amen. And then Pastor David is sitting in his office, and you know, maybe you're on your lunch break. Oh, I can stop there and ask Pastor David for some spiritual wisdom. And he's there. Wouldn't that be powerful? Now, if you guys don't want that, I can keep working. But, well, oh, the pastor is always busy. He's not available. You need a pastor who is available. He's sitting there. You can, he can meet with you. He's not running 
crazy. Hey, eh? We have to stop that. So tithing is one way to worship God. Put it into practice. To honor him as your provider and remind yourself that all of your resources belong to him and are provided through his grace. As you give away that first that 10% of your income, you set your cause to honor God in the way you handle the rest of your finances. When to give, consider your pay schedule. Establish a pattern of giving when your resources increase. This habit allows you to regularly remind yourself of God's faithfulness and to express gratitude to him by giving to meet the needs of others. Where to give? These are very practical questions here. Typically, the tithe should be given to, somebody finish it, to the local church that you go to. The church that you've made your church, that's where you give your tithe to. If you made this church yours, you should tithe here. Where you worship. The gifts support your pastor and ministry staff members who are actively serving you. And they help, they help maintain the work of the church in your community. As God prospers you and directs you, additional gifts can be given to other ministries that are advancing the gospel. Now, what I'm telling you is what myself, I'm practicing it. I'm not telling you what, I'm not doing it. Okay? We are practicing it. And it starts with me. In fact, if you are one of our leaders and you're going to become a leader, how many of you want to be a leader in this church? You want to lead. You know, you want to be involved. Then I'm, if I'm going to put you in place, I probably, I don't do that. But I want to know if you believe in tithing. Somebody said, well, that can't be. I said, well, then you're, you can just be there, but I can't put you in leadership. Because we have to lead by example. Imagine if I'm not tithing and I'm telling you to tithe. It just doesn't work, right? <laughs> I have to tell you to do what I myself, I'm doing it. So we have to do that. Now, you can be in the church, but you can't be a leader if you are not tithing, basically. I mean, maybe a leader in a very prominent position. I, I don't think I can put you there until you begin to tithe. It's very hard, don't you think? Pastor David, you need to stop it now. <laughs> but I love you guys so much that I have to tell you the truth. We love you. We love the world. Jesus loves the world so much that he has to tell them that they need to be born again. It may not, they may not sit right with them, but he has to tell them, repent. <laughs> That's love. Hallelujah. When you discipline your kids because you love them, until you yeah, discipline them you, because you love them, not that you hate them. Hallelujah. So praise God. Now, he said how to give. Right? Now, no, what, what to give? The tithe is the, we talked about the 10% of your income, of your gross income. In addition, in giving 10% of your monetary income, consider giving God the first fruit of the resources as well, uh, such as your time. See, we tithe, not only we tithe with, a, oh man, I have time. Maybe I can volunteer some of my time to help Pastor David with the renovations that's going there. Oh, maybe another brother is moving. How many of you know if you're moving, you got to know who your friends are really? I get called, <laughs> I get called pastor, I'm moving. I, I don't know anybody in Regina to help me. You know, you know, guess what? Pastor David will get with his truck and go and help that person move. But sometimes I need two, three hands, right? That's you're giving your time. That person will appreciate it and they will praise God and glorify God. There are all kinds of things we can do. The conference, you can, the, you know, you can uh, volunteer. Giving him the first part of your day in a quiet time. How is your quiet time? Do you even have one? <laughs> a quiet time. What is that? That sounds too spiritual, Pastor David. I've never heard. It means it's a time where you want to be alone so you can talk to God. 
Oh, maybe you have your Bible on and you can meditate. Quiet time. It's a very good thing to do. Amen? It's a time to spend with God. A quiet time and taking one day in, the seven, in seven to focus on worship and rest. That is what I need to do, Pastor David. I'm not just talking to you guys. We need to take time so that we can meditate with the Lord and seeking him. Investing your gifts and abilities in your church and community. How to give. Your motives for giving are important to God. It's very important. Every man according as he purpose in his heart. Now talking about motives, sometimes we give because we have a motive. The motive should be pure. Hey? It should be pure. I know that as a pastor, you know, somebody will come and say, Pastor David, I'm giving you this. But I want to know what you're going to use it for. I say, man, maybe don't give it. I say, Just give it to the church. When we have the need, we can do it. Right? Sometimes when I was in Bible school, we did a study. We all have gifts. Some people have a gift of helps. They have a gift of help. If you have a gift of help, helps, you also you need to know that that gift also has some weakness attached to it. What would be the weakness? The weakness is that as you help, sometimes you want to control. Right? That shouldn't be. Oh, the pastor is now not preaching my favorite message. I will stop it now. I don't give now because... Oh, I'm not being fed in that church. Have you heard that? <laughs> Where do we get these ideas? I'm not being fed. So I'm not going to give now. There's no such thing. Being fed. But you also need to learn to get the spoon and feed yourself. Praise God. Get your Bible early in the morning. <laughs> it's not up to the pastor to feed you. You have to get some... How many of you went to university? When you're in high school, they feed you everything. They give you all the notes. They give you everything. And then you go to university, and they drop you in the class, and the professor comes and talks around. And then he'll say, there is a book in the library somewhere, page this, and there's a book here. And there. First day of university, and say, huh? At high school, I have everything put ready for me to just. But now I'm in university, and they they just, they don't give you, you have to go and get the books and make your own notes. They give you a little bit of information here and there, and you take it. So we have to become like, we have to be mature. Whatever you get here on Sunday is supposed to help you to go back, amen, so that you can open your Bible and begin to feed your spirit. You have to, you have to feed. You can't be spoon fed like a child. You see, there's a time to be a child, but we have to grow up. We have to learn to feed ourselves so that now you are not only receiving when you come here on Sunday. Actually, by now, you should become prophets. You should become, you feed yourself. You say, man, I heard one thing Pastor David mentioned. Maybe I need to go. He's talking about tithing. Let me study it. Let me find more so I can really get convicted so that I understand it. Hallelujah. Am I helping somebody this morning? So we need to really grow in that tithing. Now, the good thing is, it's not how much you give that God is looking at. He's not going to ask you for a million dollars when you don't even make 10 bucks. And that's not, it's not about that. Actually, the moment you start making a million dollars, the harder it is to tithe. <laughs> One day I sold my house in Muzjo. I, I got a wartime house. I fixed it really nice. We got it very cheap those days, $27,000. And then we sold it one day for over 100 something. But when you look at it, then you say, oh, now, David, you have to. I sat there for a while. I, I'm just, it's hard. You, if you think, oh, when I become this, then I'm going to do it, you will never do it. It is hard for rich people to tithe. <laughs> it's easier for those who work in McDonald's, 
If they make a thousand bucks, they can give maybe a hundred bucks to God. But if you're making a million dollars and you have to give a hundred thousand dollars, my goodness, you're going to say, I, I think I need to redefine what that is. I think that's, <laughs> I think that was just talking to people in the Old Testament, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's a, yeah, I think God understands, you know. I think he was talking to a uh, brother of Nish you know, and somebody else, not me. It becomes hard. It actually becomes very hard. But don't think that some people say, oh, man, you know, the reason our church doesn't have money is because we don't have rich people there. Forget it. God is not looking for that. But I tell you, most of the things we do in this church, they, 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 all the things happen is from you, the small ones you give. But when you put it together, whoo, when you put it together, the five bucks, the ten bucks, the hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, three, whatever it is, you put it together, God blesses it, hallelujah. And the anointing of God is in it. And many people are puzzled at how we are running this thing. It is from here. But we have to be consistent. Now, this is one I want to talk about. Everybody say consistent. Just like you're paying your rent, you're very consistent. Your vehicle plates, you're very consistent. I'm telling you, how consistent are you in giving to the work of the Lord? That is the key. Because sometimes, some one pastor called me, David, you have to be careful. January and February is always the hardest month of the church financially. But how many of you know we beat that? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. That may not apply to us if we're just consistent. I'm telling you, we can't afford for this mission to fail. What you see right now, ask me, Pastor David, what do you see? I see big things are coming our way. I see a breakthrough is coming our way. I see, and if you don't see, I'm sorry, Lord, help them to see. I want God to help you to see what I see. I see a breakthrough coming. I see a breakthrough coming not only for the church. When I talk about the church, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you prospering in your house. I'm telling you, the devil is a liar. He wants you to come to your house and cause havoc. And if he causes havoc there, now you're in trouble. Then you say, well... Maybe I should just skip this Sunday. I, I, <laughs> maybe for two Sundays I'll skip just to help myself out. The devil is a liar. Yeah. And God promised the children of Israel. He said, I'm going to rebuke the devourer. Who is the devourer? The devil. He wants to devour. He comes to want to destroy your house. And you want God there to rebuke him. Get out of Pastor David's house. In fact, he can't even come close to your neighborhood. How many of you, you probably are the reason your neighborhood is safe? Because you are, you are calling on the name of the Lord. They are benefiting from you because you are a God-fearing person living in that neighborhood. If you don't believe that, you need to talk to who? Lord. And you need to talk to Abraham. The reason God destroyed the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, because he could not find Ten righteous people living in there. He said, if I could have only ten, maybe I would leave the whole city for the sake of those ten people. And Abraham said, what about 20? What? He came from 50 all the way to five. And God said, now I'm going to destroy that city because there are no righteous people living in that city. But I'm telling you, we have in the city of Regina. They don't know that the reason this city is safe the way it is, is because there are righteous people that are calling the name of the Lord, calling on the name of the Lord, living in that city. This city is blessed because of us. This city is blessed. And I'm telling you, your house needs to be protected. I had my vehicle falling apart, my daughter's vehicle falling apart. I said, oh, that's the devourer. Vehicle problems. And then you spend here, then they found out, I spend on a wrong thing, and then there's another thing. Oh, Lord. I say, Lord, the enemy is trying to take your finances. 
In fact, if you read there in Haggai, Haggai, it says, you go to work to earn money to put into, into your pocket with holes in it. <laughs> as, as soon as it gets right to your account, it's gone. It's, it's not blessed. God wanted to bless us financially, amen? God wanted to bless us. You know, our brother was talking there about how he's getting uh, an interview. Man, we're going to pray for those interviews. That you're going to be the one that is highly favored. Highly favored. They look at you and they say, you're blessed. We, uh, we think we see something in that person. And God is going to prosper you. Hallelujah. Amen. Did I do a good job, guys? Am I not going to get in trouble? <laughs> it's not a very easy topic to talk about. How grow in the fear of the Lord. This is another thing. Grow in the fear of the Lord. The practice of tithing provides a regular reminder of your dependence on God. If there is anything you can take today, this is it. The practice of tithing provides a regular reminder that you are depending on God. God is your source. Hallelujah. In good times... Tithing helps you remember that God is the source of all blessings and it allows you to demonstrate your gratitude for his care. In hard times, tithing motivates you to remember God's faithfulness and it enables you to demonstrate trust in God to provide for all your needs. It's very important that we look at those things and we will touch on this topic not every Sunday. Maybe I should do that every Sunday. No. Once in a while, I'll bring this topic as, just to remind us. But I'm telling you, I'm very proud of you guys. You have not held back your giving. But don't be consistent. If it is a loony, that's it. That's what you got. You can't give what you don't have. But all of us doing it, we will advance the kingdom of God in the city of Regina. The pastor doesn't have to run worrying about bills and money for things to be paid because the congregation is rising up to the, uh, you know, they're taking their place and the bills are getting paid. Our bills are getting paid, but we need to go further than where we are at today. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Why not we all stand in the name of Jesus and then we'll close in prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you today. We thank you, Lord, that you are faithful even when we are not. You are still faithful. And Lord, I pray for your people that the enemy may come against them like flood, but you can raise up a standard. Lord, I pray that you watch over their homes, over their families, over their children. I pray that you will rebuke the devourer for their sake. That the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But you have come that we can have life and have it more abundantly. Bless this church. Bless the families that are represented. Uh, we pray, Father, for those who are looking for a job. We pray for those who are having interviews. God, that they will find favor with the employer, hallelujah. Lord, as Joseph found favor with Pharaoh, that our church members, they will be the head and not the tail. They are above and not beneath. They are called to be more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And God's people say, amen. amen. Give the Lord a praise in the house.